Let's bring in Hugh Son. He's banking reporter for CNBC.com. And Kate Kelly is a reporter with The New York Times covering Wall Street and its inner workings. She's also a CNBC contributor. Kate, let me start with you. How close did we come over the weekend or potentially this morning if these steps had not been taken to what you might describe as a panic or a run on not just a couple of regional banks, but lots of them? You know, it's really hard to know, Tyler, as, as you know, when people are doing the sort of literal Monday morning quarterbacking, having seen the dramatic steps that the government took over the weekend, it's hard to know. I mean, in some ways, I think this is a very different situation than we had in 2008. And I covered the, the collapse of Bear Stearns very closely at the time and later wrote a book about it. And it essentially collapsed into J.P. Morgan's arms in 72 hours. But the issues there were systemic. They were market wide. There were derivatives where these relationships between uh, the, the providers of the swaps, the purchasers of the swaps, these complex derivatives uh, were sort of system wide in the U.S. and Europe and beyond. Here we've got a more isolated situation where you had the Silicon Valley Bank, uh, nominally and literally, um, that as you guys have well covered in the first part of this hour, had this sort of ultimately failed risk management uh, solution, especially in the rising interest rate environment, right? They were heavy on deposits, largely uninsured deposits, a lot of them of major size. They had these longer-term assets whose, whose uh, value fluctuated along with monetary policy. And there came a point where it was very expensive to try to hedge those assets through the market because the price of swaps uh, got increasingly more expensive as the Fed telegraphed its move. So there's an argument to say that this might have remained more contained. But there's no doubt about it that people were very much on edge through the weekend, on edge throughout today and probably beyond. And if the government hadn't taken bold steps, a source of mine called their new program a bazooka, um, we might be in really treacherous waters right here today. You know, Hugh, uh, there are regional banks of a certain scale. And then there are regional banks, so-called, that are of a much bigger scale. We just showed four or five of them, M&T, Truist, PNC, if we can bring that stock chart back up. And a lot of them are suffering today. Yeah. Is that, is that fair? Look at that. They're citizens, Truist, PNC, U.S. Bank. Those are big banks, make no mistake. Yeah, yeah I, I think, um, you know, s some babies are being thrown out with bathwater. Uh, I, I think you have to ask yourself, okay, we talked about the backstop, the implicit backstop for depositors uh, at these other banks. Um, what about the, the equity holders? What happened to the shareholders of Signature and Silicon Valley Bank? They're in all likelihood wiped out. Mm -hmm. So when you look at the action at First Republic, down 70% last I checked, you know, you have to ask yourself, is there concern that there's going to be value there? Mm -hmm. um, and so I think this is what we're dealing with. This is, these are the ramifications of what happened at Silicon Valley Bank. The investors, the founders I talked to over the weekend said, they saw this, and you can't unsee this risk. And now, what, 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 what is the prudent thing for them to do? At the very least, it is to diversify the number of accounts they have, preferably to put them into a, a top four or five bank, is what I'm being told by these investors. And so, therefore, there are still money flows going on. There are still wires that are initiated over the weekend that are hitting this morning that are flowing, and money is still flowing, Tyler. So before, uh, uh, before I, if I can take one more, uh, Kel, before I do this. Kate, let me turn back to you. Uh, a lot of people are saying, okay, the, the $250,000 deposit insurance uh, limit uh, was somewhat sacrosanct. Well, it has been blown up by this, it would seem to me. You're, you're, now all depositors at SVB and Signature are going to be protected. And there is an implicit suggestion here that all depositors everywhere are going to be, uh, uh, would be protected in, in the event of a bank unwind like this. But remember... Bear Stearns, which you remember very well. Remember WAMU. Remember all of these banks that were, quote, rescued until they weren't. And the one that wasn't was Lehman. Talk to me about that and the possibility that, well, there may come a day where the FDIC and the federal government says, no, we're done protecting depositors who were foolish enough to keep more than $250,000 in the bank. Right, Tyler. And this is a critical point, right? So, so there absolutely is an implicit uh, message in there that all depositors are going to be protected, mm -hmm. whether they are under $250,000 or more. I've talked to Wall Street folks today who think at a minimum the threshold should be raised to 500000 and Kelly was just alluding to much more than that. 
But the key is it hasn't been codified yet. It wasn't done this weekend, and it may not be done in the near future. And that's important, according to p policy folks I've talked to. I've talked to people on the Hill today and former executive branch uh, officials, and they've said, look, we need to preserve some optionality here. You don't want to put together a massive program like that in a weekend. And you're absolutely right, though, Tyler, in the absence of that, uh, there could be a bank that is let go because of the moral hazard, you know, the sort of the, the, the precedent setting effect that occurs when the government brings massive resources, taxpayer funded resources to bear. Now, I know Secretary Yellen right. has made a key point of saying in this case, they're not taxpayer resources. They're a bank subsidized fund. But still, broad strokes, you know, if we're going to insure every depositor with every potentially teetering bank, you know, you could get into taxpayer bailouts here. And, and there's a real reticence toward that. So I think we don't know what the future holds. Um, so far, the early read I'm getting uh, from folks who have seen this movie before is that the, the government did a, a pretty good job in a pretty short period of time in taking the appropriate actions here.